Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making succulent flavor-packed birria tacos. So let's get started. First off, we're gonna hydrate our chilies. I want three guajillo and four ancho chilies. Place your chilies in a large heat-proof bowl, and we're gonna add four cups of boiling water right over them. Now they need 45 minutes to soak, but in the meantime, we're gonna be doing other stuff. Set those aside. Oh my gosh, very aromatic right away. While our chilies are hydrating, we're gonna cut two pounds of chuck roast into two inch cubes. Birria tacos originate in Jalisco, the state of Mexico where my mom is from. And originally they were made with goat meat, but we're not gonna do that today. Georgina would never have it. Cut to surprise a goat on the farm. <laughs> These tacos are packed with flavor and they're actually really beautiful too because of the way you cook them with the cheese melting out and everything else. So not only have they become popular just because they're delicious, but people have been taking photos of them and sharing them online too. If you do that, tag Preppy Kitchen and at John Cannell so I can take a look. Okay, now, before you move on, grab a big pot or Dutch oven. We're gonna set this over medium high heat. Ooh and add two tablespoons of veggie oil right in there. Now, while that heats up, we're gonna add one tablespoon of salt to season our chuck roast and one pound of short ribs. Did I mention I grabbed one pound of short ribs? I grabbed one pound of short ribs. <laughs> so this is a tablespoon of salt all over our meat, and then we're just gonna brown it up and set it aside. We're basically making an amazing, flavorful beef stew and a lot of times people will just make the birria and enjoy that with other things. We're gonna use that to make tacos, but I'm gonna say this makes a big batch. So if you wanna make some tacos and save the rest of the birria for later, go ahead and just pop it into the fridge and you can enjoy it with like anything. It's so delicious. Okay. Once your oil's nice and hot, dancing in the pan, we're gonna add our beef and sear it working in batches. You don't wanna overcrowd it, so give it some space but really just let it brown up. It'll take about two minutes per side. While that browns, I'm gonna be chopping up the veggies. It's not that much. It's really just dicing two carrots. And do not worry about this being beautiful knife work. No one's gonna see it. A lot of this is just gonna be like in the stew. So faster is better. Also gonna dice one onion. Take a little break from your prep just to turn the meat over. Once it's nicely browned, it should release from the pan. So if it's stuck, it's not ready yet. Just give it a few seconds. Back to chopping. Continue that work for dicing your onions. Onion, one. These tacos take a little bit of time because everything has to stew together for at least three hours. All the flavors are gonna meld together and be wonderful. But the actual work time is not that bad at all. It's really just kind of letting things simmer. That looks nice and browned. I'm also gonna have eight tomatoes. First batch of beef is done. You can see it has a nice brown on it. Add that next batch of beef in. And now we're gonna finish our prep by slicing six cloves of garlic. Just give them a smash and cut them right down the middle. So birria is a Spanish word and it translates roughly to worthless. <laughs> and that sounds pretty harsh for describing a taco or describing something to eat, but it's because the Spaniards who conquered Mexico did not like goat meat. They thought it was like unrefined, basically. When the indigenous people used it, they are like, well, oh, it's birria. This is delicious, don't mind the name, but I'm still not gonna use goat meat. <laughs> My meat's nicely browned. I'm gonna take this, set it aside to rest for a little bit. Now we're gonna add our carrots and onion right in there. These are gonna cook while we stir frequently for about seven to eight minutes or until they're tender and browned. All that beef caramelization and drippings in the pot is gonna give the veggies so much flavor. I'm gonna grab a wooden spoon and my book's available for pre-order so you can grab your copy. There's links in the description box below. Hmm. All right. Once your veggies are browned and tender, we're gonna add our tomatoes right inside. Up, up. Along with the garlic. A teaspoon of Mexican oregano is actually not oregano, it's a member of the verbena family, so it gives you like a grassy, lemony taste. I love it. That's the extractor you hear humming in the background. Two teaspoons of cumin as well. We're gonna cook this stirring constantly for two minutes 
want to really grab any of the caramelized bits off of the bottom as well while this is happening. Now I'm adding in my four cups of beef broth. We also have to puree our chilies that are nice and soft now, so add those into your blender and blend those up. All right, now we're gonna add our pureed chilies in with the beef stock. We're adding a cinnamon stick and two bay leaves. Add your beef back into this amazing stew and this is gonna to come to a boil over medium heat. And then, once it's come to a boil, we're gonna to reduce to low and simmer for three to three and a half hours or until the meat is fork tender. If you're using a thermometer, it should read 205 to 210 Fahrenheit at the thickest point of the beef. We'll be right back. <laughs> I tempt my meat, it's 205 to 210 where it's the thickest. It's also tender and amazing. So I'm gonna transfer this into a dish and just pull it apart with a fork and try not to eat all of it before I make my tacos. I might've said this earlier, but this makes a big batch. So if you don't wanna make tons of tacos, you can save your birria for later. You have it for a, as like a main stew with dinner and any kind of sides you want, or you can uh, freeze it for later and come back to it when you're ready. Mm. Two forks, just pull it apart. This flakes right apart. It has been stewing for so long and absorbing all those amazing flavors. There might be very few things better than just slow cooked meat. Okay, that is all done. Set that meat aside and grab some tortillas. This step is kind of interesting. You have your pot here. It's been undisturbed for a while while you've been um, shredding your meat. All of that amazing beef fat, all the rendered fat, has come up, it's less dense, so it floats. Use that to your advantage and we're gonna dredge the tortillas in this and grab all of the flavor and color to make them delicious and beautiful. Push this aside, we still need it though. You're gonna grab a 12 inch cast iron skillet I'm adding one tablespoon of oil over medium heat. Yeah, swirl to coat the bottom of the skillet and take a look to see that it starts dancing. That's when you know it's ready. My plain white tortilla, sad. Let's make it beautiful with the beef drippings. So add that in there, both sides. Ooh, look at that. All those drippings on top. I also have some shredded cheese at the ready. You can use mozzarella cheese or like a Oaxacan cheese. You could use Colby Jack. Basically any kind of a melty cheese is gonna be amazing in this. Now, I'm gonna cook this for about 30 seconds. It depends on how hot your skillet is. Then we're gonna flip it over carefully. I normally use my fingers, but not today. Not with this kind. Flip that over. We're gonna add a couple tablespoons of our cheese just to coat the top as well as some meat. And we're gonna use, I'm gonna add in about a quarter of a cup of my shredded beef. Now we flip our tortilla over and you're gonna let it get crispy. So it needs to cook for about 30 seconds to a minute. It really depends on your stove. So keep an eye out. There we go. You wanna see some like caramelization and browning. Okay, set that aside and we're gonna continue. Serve your tacos with some diced onions, cilantro, lime wedges. I love having some sliced radishes in there too. And of course, you're gonna have some of that warm broth for dipping. Look at that. Mm. That has a flavor that only time and wonderful ingredients mixed together can bring. You're gonna inhale these tacos and make batch after batch. I hope you get a chance to try this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my Latin playlist.